Thanks for joining us. You are live with us here in the 10 minute briefing at Bernie in Tasmania. Looking a little bit dark and gloomy there. We do have a cold front crossing the state. Also, very windy. Yeah, now we are going to get some showers, particularly northern and western Tasmania, but wind is the key feature here. Above an elevation of 400 metres, the Bureau even indicating gusts in excess of 120 kilometres per hour. This is all happening over the next few hours in Tasmania. Very good chance that tree branches, perhaps even entire trees, could be coming down. That can lead to property damage and power outages. Stay safe. We will, of course, keep you up to date with all of the latest information there. Now I'll take you across the globe to Hawaii, where the destruction of the Kilauea volcano is causing havoc on the streets of the Big Island. Here's the details. More eruptions, more destruction, and more concern for people forced to leave their homes. Tears. A lot of tears. Saying goodbye to my house. Officials extended evacuation orders, saying the red-hot lava still spewing from the Kilauea volcano on Hawaii's Big Island is moving erratically. I wish volcanoes behaved like clocks and were very predictable. But not everyone is happy about the safety measures. The longer we wait, the more it's going to turn into, or could turn into, lava flows, blocking roads, and then, then, then we don't have a chance. Our house is up on stilts, and so we're hoping that the shaking didn't cause things to our damage the home, but we don't know. We can't get in. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, at least eight volcanic vents have opened, and everyone living in the community of Leilani Estates has been ordered to evacuate. Within five minutes, there was probably a three-foot wall of lava on the street. Officials say they're working on a plan that would allow residents to temporarily return to remove additional belongings. And now my house might be gone, so that's just devastating. Might have to start over at age 56. Thursday's eruption was followed by a 6.9 magnitude earthquake. Since then, molten lava has destroyed several homes as poisonous gases continue to spew out. And officials say more eruptions are likely. There's nothing to say that it can't uh, develop some additional pressure and push beyond Leilani Estates to the east tip of the island. I'm Kim Hutcherson reporting. Incredible images coming through from Hawaii. I could watch lava flowing for hours. It's mesmerizing. Mm, it is quite mesmerizing. Almost right? like melted cheese, the way it <laughs> runs down. Stop it. Now you're just trying to tease me with melted cheese. Emma has cheese. a melted cheese issue. Mm. <laughs> Too far. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to the weather and back on home soil in Queensland. We are going to see some more showers for the Queensland coast again on Tuesday. We do have onshore winds there. And there is also a chance that we could see some showers and storms through the southern inland and also um, through the ranges as well. We had some pretty good falls tomorrow between about Mackay and Stanthorpe to the east of that line. For New South Wales, morning fog patches for the east, patchy frost for the southern ranges. A few showers and a chance of storms across the northeast, more likely for the northern coast, even the odd storm for the northern and central inland. For Victoria, it will be a dry day tomorrow, a touch cooler than today in the south. A couple of degrees above average in the north. Tasmania, after your gale force winds and showers tonight, everything goes back to normal tomorrow. Just some clearing, sorry, just a chance of late showers for the west coast. South Australia will have morning fog over some parts of mid-north and Flinders. Slight chance of showers with the coast. It's basically dry. WA also mostly dry across the state apart from the far south west coast. And for the NT, there's a slight chance of showers over the northeast top end and Tiwi Islands. Now stay tuned for continuing weather coverage. We are, of course, keeping a close eye on those storms as they move through South Australia. We'll also keep an eye on the winds across Tasmania.